All right, working on five nine inverse trig integrals. So we're going to start off with each particular one. There's three main ones they concentrate on: arc sine, arc tangent, arc secant one. So we're going to handle them one at a time. So the general form of the integral of, of one over rad a squared minus u squared. This is the general form of arc sine u over a plus some constant c. So we're going to do three examples where we just kind of add a little something different in each time. So in this particular case, just pretty straightforward. What if it's 1 over rad 4 minus x squared? Uh, in this particular case, a is equal to 2, u is just the x, so therefore arc sine x over 2 plus some constant c. Looking to the next part, what if I take the definite integral where I actually have uh, a to b bounds, lower bound 0, upper bound 1. Again, a on the bottom, b on the top. I'll go ahead and I'll tackle the same problem. So again, like we talked about before, we're dealing with arc sine of x over 2. Remember that arc sine is the same thing as saying inverse sine function. So we have to go from 1 to 0. And remember, this is f of b minus f of a. So if we plug 1 in for x, we get arc sine of 1 half. If we put 0 in for x, we get arc sine of 0 over 2. So looking at a unit circle, the sine of what? Rotation gives you a sine value of one half. So if arc sine uh, maps one half to pi over six, then sine of pi over six is equal to one half. Remember that b to a, a to b thing. So this is pi over six minus zero, which is just pi over six. If you plug this in your calculator, a decimal equivalent should be somewhere about 0.5236. Okay, let's look if we have to do one that's a little more complex in the denominator. So this time I'm going to work with nine minus 16x squared. So if this is not a simple x squared down here, but it still looks like an arc sine because I have an a squared minus a b squared here, both, notice both of these are perfect squares, then what you actually have to do is do something like a u sub. So if you let u equal to 4x, notice that I use 4x because 4x squared would be 16x squared, then du is equal to 4dx. Well, I have to create the du up here and I have to balance with the fourth out front. So if we convert this all to u's, we know that 9 can be rewritten as 3 squared, and then instead of saying 4x squared, I just write u squared with the 1 fourth out front. This now looks exactly like we were dealing with the last time. So I got 1 fourth arc sine u over 3 plus c, and then I just got to put the 4x back inside for that again. All right, let's move on to arc tan. The general form of arc tan is 1 over a squared plus u squared, taking the integral of. And the answer to that is 1 over a arc tan u over a plus c. So again, straightforward one. If we deal with basically 1 over 4 squared plus x squared, then the a value is 4 and the u value is x. So I've got 1 fourth arc tan x over 4 plus some constant c. If we take a look at a definite integral, then rad 3 to 3, and I'm going to use one very similar. So notice the only difference is instead of using 4 squared, I use 3 squared down here. So the only thing that changes is 1 third and arc tan x over 3. And now I got to do the f of b minus the f of a part. So when I put this in, I get one third arctan 3 over 3 minus basically one third arctan rad 3 over 3. Now we got to figure out what is the arctan of 3 over 3. Well, the arctan of 3 over 3 is um, pi over 4. And why is that the case? Because it's the arctangent of 1. Uh, well, what we're looking at again for here is if sine inverse of 1 is equal to some y, then tangent, I'm sorry, tangent of y should equal uh, th that bit. So tangent of pi over 4 it would be rad 2 over rad 2. So that's going to be 1. So that means the arctan of 1 is equal to pi over 4. By the same token, and I did some of the work down here that you'll see that if I'm looking for rad 3 over 3, that actually is sine pi over 6 mm -hmm. over cosine pi over 6. That's 1 half divided by a rad 3 over 2 gives me 1 over rad 3, and if I simplify, sorry, rationalize that denominator by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by rad 3, I get rad 3 over 3. So since we know sine of pi over 6 over cosine over pi over 6 is the same thing as saying tangent, so since tangent pi over 6 maps to rad 3 over 3, then arc tangent of rad 3 over 3 must map to pi over 6. So over here, I've got 1 third times pi over 4 times 1 third times pi over 6, which is basically 3 pi over 36 minus 2 pi over 36 or pi over 36. I've also given you the def dec decimal equivalent. One more example. So again, I did something a little different down here. Again, this is 3 squared. I've got an extra x up here, so that's bothering me a little bit. However, since this is not a simple x, i got to think u sub. 
So I'm in need to form a squared plus x squared. So in this case, I let the u equal x squared. Because why? Because x squared squared is equal to x to the fourth, which is what I'm winding up with here. If I take the derivative, it's 2x dx. Again, I'm close to having a 2x dx, but I need to create a 2. So there's my creation of the 2, and there's my balance. So when I rewrite, it looks like this. And then as I do my u sub, I get 1 half integral 1 over 3 squared plus u squared. So we go straight back to here, 1 half, and then 1 third arctan u over 3 plus c. So multiply these together, 1 sixth arctan x squared over 3. This is when I sub the u back in. u v equal to x squared, I sub it back in. Okay. Last one, thankfully, we're dealing with arc secant. Arc secant is 1 over u rad u squared minus a squared. And the form when you get done is 1 over a arc secant uh, absolute u over a plus c. So just plugging one straight in, if I leave x's out there for x squared and I need 25, this is 5 squared obviously, so the a value is 5, so 1 fifth arc secant x over 5 plus c. If I put in something different, uh, I just try to be brave enough to use a trig function in this particular case. So if I got sine on the inside, sine x squared on the, uh, sorry, sine down here, sine x squared on the inside, and then cosine x up here, let's do a little u sub here. So if u is equal to sine x, that means u squared is equal to sine x squared, and du is just cosine x. So if I do that u sub, all I've got is 1 over u rad u squared minus 3 squared, which is one third arc secant u over three plus c, and all I gotta do is sub back in the u, sine x over three. That's probably enough to beat it up today. Here are uh, some homework problems that we'll work on. So if you'll take a look at these and practice a few of these, we will tackle them in class, probably on Friday, if I had to guess.